Okay, here we have three different material use cases. The first one knows exactly where to place grass, rock, or snow automatically based on the shape of the terrain. The second one allows you to add realistic detail, like plaster cracking off brick. And the last one, it blends surface textures into any object placed on top. All right, let's start with blending two materials together inside Blender. First, I'm going to add a plane to the scene and give it a brand new material. This will be our base object for testing the blend. Next, we need to bring in the two materials we want to blend together. For this example, I'm going to use a brick wall material and a swirled plaster material, both of which you can get from polysuite.app. You can use any materials you want, but using PBR materials with displacement will give you the best results later on. Once both materials are imported into the shader editor, I like to keep my node tree clean and organized by grouping each material into its own node group. To do this, I'm going to select all the shader nodes for the first material, excluding the final material output node, and press Command plus G to group them. Inside the group, I'll expose a few controls. The scale from the mapping node, the displacement scale, and optionally the displacement texture, which will go into the group output. That helps improve realism later. Now I'll press N to open the side panel and change the vector scale input to a float so I can control X, Y, and Z with a single number. Then I press tab to exit the group and rename it, in this case, brick. I'll repeat the same process for the plaster material. With both materials grouped and named, I'll go back to my plane and start creating the blending material. I'll delete the principled BSDF and add a mix shader. Then press shift plus A and search for the two grouped materials, brick and plaster, and hook them up to the mix shader. Now let's control the blend. I'll start by adding a map range node and then plug a noise texture into it. This setup lets us remap the values coming from the noise to get more control over the blend transition. To create a sharp, broken edge, like plaster cracking off to reveal the brick, I'll set the from min to 0.499 and from max to 0.5. That tight range gives us a really crisp, defined edge between the two materials. Already it looks decent, but let's tweak the noise scale and detail until we get the look we want. You can also adjust the scale of the materials themselves using the float we exposed earlier. Now let's add some displacement to give it depth. Since our polysuite materials already include displacement, I'll bring their displacement outputs into a mix vector node. Also ensure you have set the displacement to displacement only or displacement and bump. Then subdivide your plane to allow the detail to come through. Then I'll hook up the mix vector and connect the map range to the mix vec. And to control the detail, add a value node to the two displacement scales on the material groups and tweak to your liking. Now let's make it look even better by using the displacement color output we set up earlier to drive a more natural blend. First, we'll grab two subtract nodes and connect them both to the map range output. This will let us fine tune the blend using math operations. Next, add a multiply node. Take the color output from the brick material group and plug it into the top input of the multiply node. Then connect that into the second input of the second subtract node. After that, Add a divide node and connect both subtract nodes to it, one to the top and one to the bottom input. Then finally, we will get one last subtract node, set it to minus five and connect that to the mix shader. For the displacement section, plug the output from the divide node into the fact of the mix vector node. Now comes the fun part, adjusting the value in the multiply node. This is what creates that awesome weathered plaster effect. You'll see parts of the brick start to show through more organically based on the displacement texture. Oh, and just a quick note. Earlier, I mentioned using the divide node for the mix vector, and that's the best way to keep the displacement depth accurate. If you plug the final subtract node in instead, you'll notice the depth gets thrown off. That can look cool too, depending on the look you're going for, so feel free to experiment. Let's take this even further. What if you want to paint in the detail yourself? Easy. Head over to the Data Properties tab, scroll down to Color Attributes, and click the Add button. Give it a name, something like Plaster, and hit Add again. Now go back into the shader editor and add a color attribute node. In the dropdown, select the new attribute you just created, then connect the output of the color attribute node into the input of the map range node, replacing the noise texture. Now if you switch over to vertex paint mode, you can paint directly onto the mesh. Wherever you paint, the plaster will disappear and the brick will be revealed underneath. And the best part, you still have full control. By tweaking the subtract values we set up earlier, you can adjust the sharpness and amount of blending to get exactly the look you want. You can also switch back and forth between your color attribute and the original noise texture, or even blend them together. Now just add a mix color node, connect the noise texture to one input and the color attribute to the other, then plug the output into the map range node. Now you can use the effect slider on the mix node to control the balance between the two. Go full noise, full painted detail, or mix them however you like. It gives you a lot of flexibility depending on the look you're going for. Okay, let's move on to the next material. This one blends an object seamlessly into the surface it's sitting on, like this. 
To start, I'm going to add a cube and a plane. The entire material setup will happen on the object being placed on top of the surface. In this case, the cube. So I'll create a new material for the cube and begin with a mix shader node. Let's keep it simple for now. I'll add a second principal BSDF, set it to pure black so we can clearly see the blending effect as we go. Next, out of the mix shaders FAC, I'll add a color ramp, followed by a mix color node. For the inputs, A will be a gradient texture, B will be a noise texture to distort the gradient. Then, I'll add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. Set the coordinate type to object and make sure to select the plane, the surface, as the object. This makes the gradient react to the floor's position. In the mapping node, rotate the Y axis by negative 90 to turn the gradient vertical. Now adjust the color ramp to center the transition. This controls the width of the blend. You can also add mapping to the, the noise texture if you want. If you haven't already, you will also need to apply scale to your plane if you scaled it up so the effect works properly with command plus A. You might also need to tweak the x-axis position to control where the blending starts per object. At this point, we've got a working surface blend effect, but now we want to blend actual materials, not just black and white shaders. So let's jump over to polysuite.app, and I'll download a ground material. I'm going to use the dark mulch. Once it's imported into Blender, I'll assign it to the plane. Then I'll group the nodes like before, rename it something like ground, and expose the scale input so I can control it easily later. Back on the cube's material, I'll delete the black principled BSDF and replace it with my new ground material group. Now when I move the cube around, the ground material blends up onto it, Now, which already looks cool. But right now, it's a bit flat and lacks design context. Let's spice it up by adding a rock model from Blender Kit. I'll group the rock material already on the model like we did before, and replace the rock material with my blend material setup. Inside that blend material, I'll now delete the white principled BSDF and plug in the rock material group instead. Now as I move the rock around the scene, you can see the ground material blends onto it dynamically, which already looks really good. From here, you can adjust the color ramp, tweak the x-axis position in the mapping node, or play with the noise texture settings to fine tune the look. But let's go even further and add some displacement to this blend. First, go into your ground material group and expose the displacement scale input. Then take the displacement texture color output and hook it up to the group output so we can access it outside. Now in the cube's material, get a mix vector node from the ground displacement. Then connect the output of the color ramp into the FAC input. This way, the displacement only affects the areas where the ground material is showing, not the rock. Next, take the ground material group, move it off to the side, and swap out the noise texture for the displacement texture color output. This makes the displacement drive the blending rather than using random noise, which looks much more natural and grounded. You may need to tweak the color ramp and the mapping's x-axis. You'll see how much better the blend looks, more detailed and more realistic. Now let's build another great material. This one automatically reads the height or slope of the object to control the material blend. It's perfect for effects like snowy mountaintops, grassy peaks, anything where the material responds to the shape of the object. To get started, I'm using the free A and T landscape add-on that comes with Blender. I'll just add a basic landscape from the list, nothing fancy, and we'll use that as our base. First thing, create a new material and add a mix shader node. We've already covered grouping materials in earlier sections, so I've got two materials ready to go. But if you're following along, you can just use a white and black principled BSDF for now. So let's begin. First, add a color ramp node, then add a separate XYZ node. We'll use this to isolate the Z axis, which represents height in 3D space. Now add a geometry node, and this is where we have two options for driving the blend. Normal output. Normals represent the direction each face is pointing. So when we isolate the Z axis from the normals, we're basically looking at how much a face is pointing upwards. With this, the blend becomes angle-based, not height-based. So instead of applying materials to high or low areas, we're applying them based on the steepness of the surface. This is perfect for things like moss or snow, only appearing on flat, horizontal areas, while steeper areas remain exposed. And next, uh, the position output. If we take the position output and plug it into the separate XYZ, we're essentially reading the location of every point on the mesh. So when we isolate the Z channel, we get the vertical height of each part of the object. This is great for creating effects like snow on mountaintops because it allows us to blend materials based purely on how high up the surface is. With position connected, the color ramp now gives us full control over the height base blend. But as you'll notice, the blend line is very straight and uniform across the mesh. It doesn't have any natural randomness. Just insert a mix color node between the Z output and the color ramp, then connect a noise texture into the B input of the mix color node. Now you're blending the raw height data with noise, and that gives you more natural variation and control over the look. 
It's a super simple tweak, but it makes a huge difference when you want to break up those perfect lines and add realism. So I'm going to stick with the normal output for now and remove the mix color node just to keep things clean. At this point, all I really need to do is adjust the color ramp until I get the look I want. But if you want to layer multiple materials, it's super easy. For example, let's say I want to add snow on top of my mountain. All I need to do is add another mix shader node, connect my full existing setup into it, and then add a simple white principle BSDF to act as the snow. To control where that snow appears, I'll duplicate the geometry node, separate XYZ and color ramp, and connect that into the FAC input of the new mix shader. Then just tweak the color ramp, and now I've got snowy mountain tops. Done. But if I want even more control, I can combine both the normal and position outputs using a mix vector node to blend between them. All I need to do is duplicate the geometry node, add a mix vector, and plug both the normal and position outputs into it. Then connect the mix vector output into the separate XYZ node. Now I can simply use the factor slider on the mix vector node to control the balance between slope-based blending and height-based blending, giving me a much more natural and realistic snowy mountain top. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed these three material blending techniques. They're a great way to learn new shading tricks, experiment with layering, and start thinking more dynamically when building materials in Blender. Don't forget to like and subscribe.